Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Grill Room. It's fig cutting season. Now I've already got a few fig cuttings started and I'm about to start some more today, so I thought I'd show you how I do it. But first, let's take a look and see how the ones I've already started are doing. I have two fig cuttings over here under the Mars Hydro TS-1000 LED light. The first one I actually didn't start myself. I just got this one here from um, a friend in Seattle and this one is called The One. It's actually an unknown variety and whoever discovered it has just called it The One and it seems to be pretty popular so I thought I would give that one a try but it's really well rooted. It's a really fat fig cutting and its leaves are looking really nice. Now the other one that I did start myself is this one here and this is actually a Burgessat grease that I accidentally broke off of my fig tree when I was moving it around so I decided to just go ahead and root it. So I've got this one here that's got a few leaves coming out and then there's another one that I'll show you in a second that doesn't have any leaves so it's not under the LED lights just yet. Now this plastic tote is where I keep my fig cuttings before they've leafed out. So I've got a heat mat in here that's set to I think 80 degrees but we've got the sensor on these pepper seeds here so I'm germinating some pepper seeds in the same container here as the, the fig cuttings. I've also got some peppers here that I'm waiting to germinate. But as far as the fig cuttings go I've got a few different varieties in here. Now this smaller one, this is the one that's the other Burgessat grease that I accidentally broke. Now this one doesn't have any leaves at all on it, but you can see there's actually quite a few roots in here. Now the reason I like using these clear plastic cups for fig cuttings is pretty obvious. You can actually see the root growth. So if I wasn't able to see those roots in there, I would think this is possibly dead because it hasn't leafed out yet but it's actually better to see a lot of roots before it leaves out. So I'm going to leave this in here in this tote until it leaves out and then I'll move it over under the LED light. Now the rest of the cuttings in here are all from Eric who I got the other fig that I just showed you. So we've got this one here, some really nice fat cuttings. This one, he's got the label MBG on there, but it's actually black greek marius so i think bgm is probably what it should say but i just started these last week and it's a little too early to see any roots on these guys yet so we could probably wait another month or so before we start seeing anything and um, so i've got two of those cuttings and then i've also got a verne's brown turkey and i got those from eric as well and this one here is another verne's brown turkey so I've got two Verns and two of the other one. And then this guy is another Verns brown turkey. So we had some pretty long fat cuttings, so I decided to cut some of them in half. So we've got three of those. And I'm about to start some more. So let's go take a look at what I just got in the mail. All right, here is the package that I just got in the mail. And this is from Ivy Organic. He does a big fig cutting giveaway every February. And last year I won the Marseille Black VS, which is doing really well. And this year I won again. This time it was on Twitter. But he's doing the giveaway on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And it's not too late to enter if it's still February when you're watching this. Um, so let's see what we got. So we have three fig cuttings here. So this one is Kevin's Kadota. And then this one here is Jeffrey's Old Yeller. So I've never heard of this variety. Um, I'm not sure. I'll have to look that one up and see what that one's like. The last one is Charles's Green Esquia. And Charles is the owner of Ivy Organic, so this is one of his big cuttings. Now we also have some of his all-purpose fertilizer. So this is the 333 all-purpose blend and I've been using his fertilizer for the last several years on my fig cuttings and other vegetables and it's been working really great. Let's see we also have in here we've got an Ivy Organics pen and 
We have a little note here. It says, all your cuttings have been scored at the bottom and rooting powder applied. Now I do have some rooting hormone, but it sounds like I'm not gonna need that. Normally when I get fig cuttings, I like to sanitize the fig cuttings, you know, soak it in a little bit of bleach water, but I don't want to wash off the, the rooting hormone that he's already put on there. So I'm just gonna skip that step this time. All right, so let's go ahead and get these potted up. Now for my potting medium, I like to use a mix of perlite and vermiculite, and I'm just going to pre-moisten it with some water and give it a little bit of a stir. I mentioned before that I like using these clear cups and I got these, I don't know, from Costco or Amazon probably. Um, but I, at the very bottom, I just took some scissors and cut three slits on the bottom edges of the cup and that's for drainage. And now I'm just gonna fill these up with our potting mixture here. And this combination I actually learned from Charles at Ivy Organics. This is a mixture I've been using for the past couple years that seems to be working really well. In the previously I was using Pro Mix, which worked okay as well, but I think I've been more successful with this mixture. One thing I like to do is pre-drill a little hole in the center of each cup. And normally I would do that to make sure that the rooting hormone doesn't come off when I put the fig cutting in there. That just helps a little bit. All right, now let's see this one here is the Kadoda. So we have two fig cuttings here and these are top cuttings. So you can see that this top part has a leaf node on it and it's not cut off. Now I've actually had more success growing fig cuttings that are not top cuttings. So I'm actually going to cut the tops off of these two fig cuttings. So I'm going to get close to that top node there. So we've got a node here that should hopefully put a leaf out. And then I'm going to do the same for this one. All right, so this one is a lot fatter than this one. So we're going to save that one um, for later. Now these are not labeled. So the first thing I'm going to do is label those. I've got this white paint marker that I got from Amazon. It's called Uni Posca. Looks like it's Chinese or something, um, but this works really well to label fig cuttings. So this one is the Kadota. Yeah. So I'm just going to mark that with, uh, I'm not going to spell out the whole thing. We'll just put a K A D. I'm going to label this other one here as well. All right, so we've got K-A-D on there, so we know what it is. So I'll put that one right in there. That actually is a pretty, that hole's a little too wide, so I'm going to redo that hole with just a smaller, there we go. Okay, so that is our first one. I'm going to go ahead and backfill this a little bit more. All right, our next one is the Ole Yeller. So we've got three cuttings of this one. And you can see the tops are all chopped off there. So I'm not going to make another cut on these because those should be just fine. So we do have one, two, three. We have four nodes on this one, which is good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one has quite a lot of nodes on it. There's, I think there's about eight nodes on this one. So we could cut this one in half and have two cuttings. Normally I try to have three or four cut, three or four nodes, and this one has three nodes. So these two we can go ahead and do as is, but this third one here, I'm probably gonna cut that one in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these ones labeled. These are the old yeller. So I'm just gonna label these OY at the top. And one thing to note about fig cuttings on how you know which is the top and which is the bottom, these ones are pretty obvious because he's got the rooting hormone powder on the bottom of those and they're, they're scored a little bit. So that's pretty obvious. But if you don't have that and you can't tell which, is, which side is which, you can always look at the nodes. So you can see um, there's like a, 
area where the leaf cut off and then there's a little node above it that's where the leaves new leaves will come out so that's how you can tell which is the top and which is the bottom so that broken off area is the bottom and the new leaf node is at the top all right so we're going to go ahead and see this one's a little fatter so we'll do this one first i'm just going to press that down a little bit and add some more i'm going to go ahead and cut this one here in half so i can show you where to do the cut so you want to remember i said three to four nodes per cutting so we've got one, two, three, we'll do four. So this is the fourth node here. So I'm gonna cut it just above the fourth node. So right there. If there's a big space between the nodes, then you'll want to make your bottom cut just below the node. But these nodes are pretty close together. So I think we're doing pretty good here. And the top is looking good too. Now let's take a look at our Last cutting and this one is the green eskia so here we've got another top cutting here so we're gonna go ahead and cut that guy off even though we've got some green leaves that looks like they're starting to try and come out here I'm just gonna cut those guys off all right and we've got one two three four five six nodes on this one they're spaced fairly close together i think i'm going to go ahead and leave these in one piece and we'll go ahead and just plant that whole cutting oh we forgot our label this one is the green eskia so we're going to label that gi so this one since it's already got some green nodes that look like they're almost ready to come out we're gonna have to keep an eye on this one and if it starts leafing out before it gets roots then we're gonna have to move that under the lights but for now we're gonna go ahead and put these in our tote so one more thing i like to put these clear cups inside of a solid cup because that helps avoid any mold or fungus from growing inside the cup because light is bad and also lights on the roots isn't a good thing either so I'll be posting updates on our fig cuttings and hopefully they'll root well. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.